Hello, I'm Ian Kasperzak, technical lead for the Android Open Source team. And my co-presenter today is Lance Fluger, engineering manager leading the system health and multi-device testing efforts for Android. Today, we'll be talking about how we use Google's infrastructure to ensure both quality and velocity when developing Android in the open source. We're going to start by following the life of a change list, or CL, that is created, reviewed, tested, and submitted through the Android open source branch. We will conclude with how to find the Android code lab so you can experience all of this yourself after today's sessions conclude. Of course, with any change, we begin with the source. The AOSP source is available at android.googlesource.com. And the Android source is a collection of Git projects synced using a custom tool we call repo. The open source branch is roughly 50 gigabytes big, but mostly we're talking about the main or master branch there. If you consider all the branches that have ever existed in AOSP, it's significantly bigger. It's comprised of multiple languages, the most well-known of which is, of course, Java, but there's also C and C++, Python, and even a little Rust sprinkled there throughout the Android source code. Instructions on how to initialize and sync the source are covered in the code lab, and more info on that is coming up. Android is built with a build system we call Soon, but it's in the process of migrating to the more commonly known Bazel build system. More information about Bazel can be found at bazel.build. So you've synced the source, and of course you made your change, but now we need to test. First, you can test your change locally using your own device with the Android debugger or ADB bridge. But if you don't have a local device available, you can use a local emulator or a cloud-based virtual device. And that's covered in the code lab, and we're going to talk in depth about the cloud virtual device in the next presentation. Common types of tests, of course, include functional tests, possibly more better known as unit tests, and also metric-based instrumentation and native tests. Now, you can either push tests to your device directly with ADB, or you can use ATest, which greatly simplifies rerunning tests between code iterations. You can find more info about how to do testing at source.android.com slash compatibility slash tests slash development. So let's look inside a relatively simple test. Imagine we have a test start in the animator test class. First of all, what does this test do? Well, it's a pretty simple test. It starts the animator, and then it verifies or asserts that it's both running and that it has been started. Now we understand what it's doing, but how do we run it? Fortunately, a test makes this very, very easy. It's as simple as a test, animator test, number sign, test start. Nothing else, no dependency lookups or module lookups, no special parameters are required. a test really greatly simplifies launching tests on Android. So we have our change, we've tested it locally. Now, how do we get it submitted to AOSP? Well, this is the point at which you wanna find an owner in the AOSP project to help you move forward. AOSP uses Garrett for code reviews. The Garrett UI provides a top level view of all changes currently being submitted and previously submitted to the AOSP branch, and it enables CL discussions via review comment threads. In addition, test automation runs on top of Garrett for every single change and provides test signals to change authors to validate the change is passing all of the pre-submit checks and tests before it's submitted to AOSP. Now, all AOSP changes must be code reviewed and approved by an owner. As Android is, of course, a very large collection of projects, there are a lot of owners across Android. But fortunately, Garrett provides a straightforward interface for finding an owner and reviewing your change with the Find Owners feature. So now that your change is in review and you have an owner reviewing it, it's being whisked away into Android's pre-submit testing infrastructure to verify it's ready to be submitted. We're halfway through our journey in the life of a code change, and now Lance is going to take you through its journey into Android's infrastructure. For the second part, we're going to cover continuous integration, including system health testing, test operations, when a change gets released, and a hands-on code lab you can try out for yourself. The CI system enables Android to develop at scale. When the owner marks a change ready, tests will run pre-merge and post-merge. These tests run on virtual machines in Google Cloud, enabling great scale, as well as on thousands of physical devices. The tests run on AOSP branches, as well as internal branches to ensure no breakages. For tests to be in pre-submit, it needs to be completed within 30 minutes and have a flake rate of less than 0.02% to ensure developer velocity. 
As part of the pre-merge testing, changes go through a series of static analyzers, also known as linters, that check for a wide range of things, such as ensuring the correct license is there, API coverage, and ensuring code guidelines are met. Post-submit testing runs on every build or on a set timed cadence, for example, every four hours. These tests can be less hermetic and take longer. Since there are multiple changes that may have occurred, they need to be triaged through automated alerting and bisection tooling. System health includes things like power and performance. These are also very important. A specialized set of performance micro, macro, and stress tests are ran. There's a set of tools focused on processing, storing, visualizing, alerting, and bisecting on metric-based tests. Power testing, similar to performance testing, is also metric-based. Power tests have micro benchmarks as well as more user-realistic day-of-use coverage. Instrumentation is done through physical power meters as well as software-based data the device reports. Due to the system nature of this area, regressions may need to get escalated to a dedicated team with authority over power and performance. Builds and tests are kept green through a global rotation program of Android engineers that use established tools and processes to keep Android continuously healthy. Power and performance have dedicated monitors due to their complex nature. Android's policy is revert first, meaning bad changes will be reverted and then the author will be alerted to fix and resubmit their change. You may be curious when will an AOSP change be released? Typically in the next incremental release or depending on the cycle, the next overall major version release. Android 11 had 49 incremental releases and Android 12 has had 13 releases so far. After the talking sessions, we encourage you to try out the Android Code Lab. In this Code Lab, you'll get a hands-on opportunity to explore everything discussed in this presentation. Check out the Code Lab at source.android.com slash setup slash start. Next, Alistair is going to do a deeper dive on the Android Cloud Platform.